hope nobody's uh, watching. Now run! I'm gonna chase you. <laughs> you didn't tell me that was run! Part of the thing. Run! Ah! Ah! I'm chasing you! Ah! Then I capture you. A man and a woman left their home to switch things up and go on the road. And they didn't know where they would go, but it's gotta be better than staying home. They switched it up. They switched it up. Welcome to Switch It Up. And as you can see, I'm kind of solo at the moment. Sheila is off camera doing some work. It's a super cold day out here in Orlando, Florida with some 30 mile an hour winds, but I've been looking through comments and a lot of you have comments on how we were ending up getting some of our video footage in different aspects because it was kind of like blowing your mind a little bit on what we were doing. So I am going to address those questions right now in this simplified little video. And this is the hardest video to do where I'm actually shooting on my phone because I needed an extra camera and I'm on a tripod and this is not normally my style, but it is important. So let's just start with the basics. Like you're going to start doing vlogs. I've watched a lot of YouTubers that are doing RV channels and a lot of them just kind of, no offense, but I mean, they just kind of sit on a couch and then they tell you about their time and then they might splice in some B footage and then the vlog's over. And that's not how we normally do things. I started uh, doing vlogs a long time ago, over 10 years ago, and I learned that one, it's important to have a story. So the story with this video is me sharing you the components on what I'm doing on how I'm shooting the videos. So you have to have a story wrapped around. So that's the very first component. It doesn't matter what you shoot on, it just matters that you somehow tie in a story so there's a conclusion to what you're talking about. This conclusion, I'm sure, will be dynamic. I have no idea, because I'm not scripted. Number two, it doesn't matter what you're shooting on. I know this is, everyone's like, oh, I, I, what camera should I use? You just need to start. Like, I'm using my Samsung phone, and you just need to start. You just need to push record, shoot. If it's really important and you have some really great knowledge, people will watch your content, and they'll come, and they'll see what you're going to have to say. It's my two biggest tips. One, story. Two, just pick up the phone, pick up whatever you have and start shooting. Now, it comes to this next component of, well, if I wanna go past that Todd and I wanna worry about my audio, which the audio on this is probably not great because it's on my cell phone, and you want to start developing and having something that you use on a daily, uh, I start out with different cameras. Right now we're using, so Canon M50, uh, this is my go-to camera. Uh, a lot of people ask me, did you switch the lens? No, this is the kit lens because I am pretty violent with my cameras. I throw them around a lot and do different things. And I've realized through the course of doing a number of videos that yes, I can go to another lens. Yes, I can spend the money, but my vlogs are probably not justified at this time to do something like that. I did switch and go to a variable ND filter, which when you're in a bright sunlight, it's great to have a variable ND filter. They're cheap. This isn't even like, this is like a $30 ND filter. And then, uh, of course, I use a dead cat. The problem with the dead cat on these is, is that if you don't tie your, your wonderful cord on here and you're walking around, you're vlogging, and it's doing this, you're going to hear a lot of jiggling and a lot of noise in your audio. Next up, uh, instead of using the, the other type vlogging instruments, I actually use a switch pod. I love the switch pod. I have a Joby head on it, but... Um, this switch pod has been lifesaver for me in a number of instances where you'll see the stand-up shots or I'll put it in a corner, things like that. But for vlogging, this is where Sheila loves to sit there and go, do we always have to, because you do stand out, you have to get over standing out. So a lot of our time is spent like this. You'll see us. A lot of people in this RV world will use a GoPro and they'll do this. I don't like the audio on a GoPro and I'll go over that in a second. So this is a lot of our time is spent. And I love this angle. It is a little heavier, but it just feels good in your hand. So these are our components. Down below, I'll put the links on how we're buying the things that we buy. We usually just do Amazon or something like that. But if I can find the links and put them in, I will. Yeah, so SwitchPod, Joby Head, Canon M50, 
and this is just a Rode uh, microphone that goes on top of the variable ND filter. And I shoot all my settings. Oh, here's a big secret. All my settings are on auto. Auto white balance, auto focus. I don't do anything fancy. And I know this goes against every vlogger, YouTube vlogger out there. But you know what? My, my philosophy is just capture the footage the best you can and don't get lost and not get the footage that you need to. Next up, the good old GoPro. So this is actually the adjustable. So this is in a situation where I'm going to go into somewhere and I don't like the audio on this. I hate the audio on this. And so a lot of times I just want to make sure I'm going to get the footage. And this is even the Hero 7, I believe, 6 or 7. So I don't even know the... I just know it's there. It's a trusty camera. It's fast go-to. You click one button and I'm recording. So, and then when I'm done, I click one button and it's done. So I like the speed of this. Uh, the footage does pretty good, especially if you're going, like if we're gonna go out kayaking and I wanna get underwater footage, this is my go-to camera. If I'm worried about dropping something or water or things like that, this is a go-to camera until recently. So the phone, number one, then I went to a normal camera, the Canon M50. GoPro is my backup, and then I added this to the arsenal. I went back and uh, purchased a little while ago. I went with the, I am a licensed drone pilot, so I won't ever run into that issue of not being licensed. But this is just the Mavic Air, and it's small, and it can fit actually in my back pocket if I cram it in there, or into a backpack. So I do use the drone on occasion, and basically they're for establishing shots. An establishing shot is just showing you the environment that we're in or letting you know the whole overview of where we're at. And so that's what my purpose of a drone is. A lot of people use drones for different things. This drone is only for establishing shots. I know I told you this is boring. I do use, when I'm doing underwater, I do use a, a floating device for my GoPro. And now for the coupe de gras. And that is this. So. This, I watched it when it first came out, and it's called the Instant 360, Insta 361, and it looks, I don't I, I, I it's really even hard to describe. It's a very thin, small camera, and it's on a pole. And the reason I liked it was, I was watching it when it first came out, the pole actually edits itself out of the footage. So I don't have to do anything in post-editing to get this. The problems come into play when they first came out was the editing process itself was absolutely horrific. Meaning that what it would happen is, is you'd have to spend a lot of time trying to get the shots that you want and what you want to do. Now, this is the second version of this. There's another version, uh, which is a square that kind of looks like a GoPro and it has different modules. I just didn't like that. It's a great camera, um, but I just, I wanted something that was quick and fast and literally I've hit one button and it takes three seconds to boot up and it's already recording. And the benefit of this camera is, is it's shooting 360 degrees around you all at the exact same time. Which means that you don't have to worry about where you're focusing your camera on. Whereas if I'm carrying this camera, the action is in front of the camera at all times. So I'm having to make sure that I'm getting it or close or whatever. This camera it's shooting not just in front of me, but it's behind me, on top of my head, down below, my feet, everything. So the problem with how much data it uses is, is the main significant issue. You cannot use this camera for like a 30 minute shoot. Um, you, five minutes, seven minutes tops, and then you probably need to stop that one and start a new recording because it does eat up a card a, really fast it just fills it completely up because it's so much data coming into it at once then in the end you do have to post edit it which means that if i'm shooting all around me and let's say that i was in the canoe from the video everyone was laughing at we're at low tide <laughs> oh, oh, oh god oh, oh god <laughs> what the frick are those things they're like they're like Falling on me. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> we need to get out of here. Yeah. I actually take this camera. It is waterproof up to 30 feet below water. 
I've never done that because the microphones. So if you're using an underwater camera, like a GoPro, if you've ever used one, when you pull it out of the water, it's full of water and you can't get any clear audio. This actually has great audio, even though it's far away from you. But if you start dunking it in water a lot, the audio is going to get blurred. So even though it would be great for that, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use it in that capacity. This is primarily going to be a go-to camera that I can use quickly, maybe in an action sequence, or if I'm wanting to record all, everything and I just want my hands free. So you'll see it on bicycle shots. You'll see it on establishing shots on where we are in one environment, which would be like this right now. If I pull this off. She'll love this because I'll show her over here working. And I turn it on and it immediately starts recording. And then I can just hold it right here. And as I'm holding it here talking to you and I'm moving my hand around, as you're gonna see is, is that you don't see the shot. And then I can move it around here and you can see the whole environment we're in. She was over there working. You know, all of our stuff everywhere, the big box that's over here that all my camera equipment sits in and then my camera bag. So you can just see everything. So I do love this camera for establishing shots or catching things um, that are important. Last but not least would be what do I bring and what do I take with me? So when you're shooting, I call it day bags. You just need a small bag to take with you. you generally, it's my drone, uh, the couple cameras and things maybe some water but this is my just a go-to bag that i could just grab and go so and then my actual bag for camera equipment um i've traveled all over the world with this bag and i love this bag uh it's the low pro tech series so not only does it have some great compartments it also i can slip my laptop in here and then it holds all of my camera gear if I'm going on a trip for two or three days and we're going somewhere. I know you don't think that we're that technical when we're shooting video. It drives Sheila crazy that I'm always bringing camera stuff with me because the whole goal is, is one story, two get the shot, three audio. And that's my my thought process. And so okay, side note real quick. Um, I just want to talk to you about just doing vlogging in general. I've been vlogging for a while. I developed my own style. Everyone has their own styles. But if you're wanting a great tip, I'm going to give a shameless plug to my boy, Cody Warner. He actually uh, put out a video series on how to vlog on YouTube and how to things get things set up and established. And I noticed a lot of our viewers are just doing one video once a month, one video every two weeks, things like that. You just need a little refinement on what you're doing so you can take it to that next level. I'm going to recommend his course. I don't remember exactly how much it is, but I'm going to put his link down below. And I just say, use that as your beginning basic steps that you can actually up your vlog game a little bit. So hopefully that helps. Little plug, shameless plug for Cody because it's just really good info. And I can show you all my camera equipment, but I am not the go learn how to vlog guy and how to set up camera shots and all that. I'm just kind of, we just do it. So hopefully that helps if you want to up your game a little bit. But other than that, I just had to develop, like, if we're going to do something on action-wise, action-wise, action, action-wise. All right, Sheila, I need your help. Really? <laughs> I need your help. We're gonna do. I want to. I gotta show them action stuff. So I gotta show you how this camera comes into play when you're wanting to do action stuff. She doesn't look very happy. I'm um, interrupting. Imagine that you need my help. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need me to do? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta switch. Let me get the other stuff. Okay, I'm gonna give you this stick. Hold it down there. She's never used this before. <laughs> look not, at you. I'm not the camera girl. You're pro. Now we're gonna go. We're gonna go outside and I'm gonna show them why this camera is important to get action stuff. It so can catches we... you with the crabs. <laughs> it doesn't catch me with the crabs. <laughs> you know, we're gonna need this. What? Let's go. Don't oh yeah. The stick is long. Okay. 
It is oh, super cold. Okay, so let's just say for a second that we're out in the woods, <laughs> okay? okay? And as we're in the woods, like animals come up, right? And as the animals come up, we're gonna show them what it's like and why you should use a camera like this. I just stand here and hold this stick. Yeah, okay. yeah, I brought some help. This is our animal. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be the animal and I'm gonna show you how this camera works. Let me put you down over here. Okay, I'm the animal and you have an Insta360 camera and this is why it's important. Animal shots. So I'm a big bear. I'm a big bear and I'm gonna chase Sheila around. And you can see, like I can show the camera going all the way around. Now run, I'm gonna chase you. <laughs> you didn't tell me that was <laughs> run. <laughs> run! Ah! Ah, I'm chasing you! Ah, then I capture you. Ah, ah, ah. Really? Ah. <laughs> yeah. Here comes the big <laughs> Yeah, so you can lower it now. So that pretty much shows you how this wonderful camera works. Now I'm out of breath. So in Jared the description, Cole. yeah, make sure you like, comment. Do all the things. <laughs> and uh, hopefully this helped you out. The actual editing of the 360 is done on your phone and then you export it. It goes into your computer and then you throw it into your videos. Whew, I'm out of breath. It's a lot of work being an animal. Arr. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> We're out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>